Let's. Uh, You're ready to go. What do you remember about your grandfather Emmett and what he found and saw? Well, of course, personally, I first remember in the, in the fifties, in the early fifties, when I was a young boy. But he bought this place in 1929, and uh, just a year or two after he bought it, they had a big flood, and he'd uncovered some of the tracks that are visible today, and then. Uh, during the during the thirties he had a man that worked for him that lived here on the place named Jim Riles. And Jim uh dug out what we call human tracks and and dinosaur tracks and they sold them to different people. And uh to different people all over the country. I mean, you know, it wasn't just here locally, nobody but cause cause people wanted them. Uh, and then then granddad in the sixties the more interest came about because of dinosaur tracks and uh, people went to coming in here and he went to charge them to come in and see them and, and of course there was a lot of interest in the so-called human-like tracks because they were in the same layer and of course as we all know there's lots of pros and cons about that and um, tell us why don't you tell us about um, Jim Morales cutting out the tracks that That was sold to Dr. Cook. Well, I, I guess that was in the 30s, or it might have been in the 40s. He dug out a real good one that he sold to a, he was a doctor, an MD over in Cleburne in Johnston County, and it was perfect. Uh, I never seen the actual track. My dad and my granddad did, but I seen pictures of it. But it, it had just perfect five toes, arched the foot. Uh, heal this like it we have today if we was to step in mud and and then the mud would harden, you know, and fall. I mean, it, it was perfect. And was it, how long was that track? <sighs> I, I think 16, 18 inches. Okay. I, I think was was the dimensions on it. And, 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 we, and we looked for it years later up in the 50s and 60s, but Doc Cook had died and, of course, it disappeared, you know, people. What year did he die? Fifty something, a late late fifties, I think. Because I know he he operated on my knee, had a little cyst or something on my knee, and and that was in fifty five or fifty six, and I think he died a little after that. Now did um, Jim Riles carve any tracks? Not to my knowledge. Okay. I mean, you hear people say, you know. And, but but I, I I don't know of that myself personally. Now what do you know about the Moss family? Oh, I've known them all my life. Uh, <clears throat> live neighbors to them here. Some of the boys my age and stuff still lives here, joining me. And uh, Charlie, their their dad was pretty interested in that kind of stuff. You know, he wasn't educated in it, but uh, as far as like being a paleontologist or anything, but I mean he you know he's interested in invested with a lot of people that knew a lot about stuff. Now, did he, uh, did, did the Moss family, did Charlie, did they know about the man tracks and did mm -hmm. they believe they were real and all? You know, really, I I guess they did. I mean, I never did hear contrary to that. Okay, let's talk about, um, there were some people that came and destroyed the tracks. What did, what did you see and hear about that? And remember and oh, I just, I remember going down there and, and seeing what they'd done. They just tried to chip them up and just, you know, try to break them and where you wouldn't be able to see really what was there. What was, what were, what were they, what was it, rebar or what were they using? I think they had what we call a crowbar, I think is what they had. It was what was, you know, it's just a big heavy bar and they just, of course that rock, you know, it, it it's not real, real hard rock. I mean, it's hard, but it's not like granite or anything like that. It's just uh, limestone. You know, you can beat on it pretty easy. And especially the way those tracks were made with the indentions in them, you could chip that away pretty easy. And, and uh, e even just the water running over them wires them some. I mean, over over periods of years. And, of course, you have heat and, and cold and... Winter time, it freeze water freezes, and that, there's cracks in that rock, and that chips them out. You know, just the freezing alone. That's one of the bad things about these dinosaur tracks that's exposed up here on this ledge, is the water gets in them and then freezes in the winter time and chips it out. So, uh, what do you personally believe about the tracks? 
Well, uh, whether there's humans that looked exactly like we looked or whatever, I don't know, but I do believe they were some form of, of human being. Uh, whether you call them human or whatever name you'd want to give them, I believe there's some kind of form of, because I mean, if you look, if you look at the track that's in the stone, it, it is similar to our foot, our foot, only bigger. I mean, there's there's some men that's probably got a foot that big. I mean, but the normal, the normal male, I mean, that doesn't have a foot as big as some of those. And uh, before some of the erosion, uh, there was a prominence of five toes and arch and a foot and a heel. You you could see it. And of course, like I say, now water has wore them over the years. I mean, since they've been exposed, you might find some that's still covered up by rocks and ledges and stuff. It, if you uncover them, would probably be prominent. Yeah, what did, what did Emmett and Jacob think of the tracks? Well, did they think they were real? Yeah, yeah, they, they thought they were real, yeah. And then, then did you guys have a sign out here that used to be by the road? Yeah, see? yeah, yeah. See the man track, yeah. Did you get a lot, how many people would you get every year? A lot, a lot. Of yeah, you get, you get a good many. I mean, they didn't really advertise that much. Their deal was kind of word of mouth deal. I mean, it's a, you know, it's for the internet and for all that stuff like that. They'd have a lot of people come, and, but it, it was basically word of mouth and uh, paleontologist people and people like that would pick up on it and they'd come. And we'd have universities. Uh, North Texas sent a North Texas University up at Denton sent a group of people down here and. Uh, A&M, there was a little group of, uh, I don't know if they was tightly affiliated with A&M, but they were A&M students, you know, I remember. And uh, the Seventh-day Adventists are, are big on this. They they do a, they like to do a lot of research on this. And I, I know uh, the Seventh-day Adventist College over at Keene, they used to have a lot of students come over here and study this and look at it. Yeah. Do you remember ever seeing the movie Footprints in Stone? Mm-hmm. And what did... And you, were you here when they filmed that with mm -hmm. Stan Taylor? Mm -hmm. You want to tell us? Can you tell us a little bit about? She that? don't remember much about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you remember them excavating? All yeah, that? yeah. Oh, yeah. They dug, sandbagged, and they done all that to get the water off where they could get real good documentation of pictures and things like that. They they worked a good bit, and there were some real credible, intelligent people. Uh, you know, I. I there's fly by night people and there's people that thinks they know something and uh and really and truly they don't but but they, these were educated people in their field and uh they they done a lot of good work on that how long were they here do you remember i think they was here one deal is here about a month and then i think they had to break for a little bit i think and then come back again See, this river down here, uh, the uh, human-like tracks, they're only exposed during real dry weather. And I know they had to do a little bit of sandbagging and stuff when they, when they, when they done that film. And we, uh, we, we get a severe drought here about every seven to, about every seven to ten years when the river just completely dries up. And that's, that, you, you've got to catch it in a drought to be able to, you know, do, do do good documentation on the human track. That's the best time to do it. During that excavation, did you see human tracks that impressed you? Oh yeah, yeah. They they, they found some good tracks, especially up against this bank, uh, what I call the west bank or south bank. And that's where is that the bank that they moved dirt out mm -hmm. of to get mm -hmm. further mm -hmm. underneath? Mm -hmm. Because those tracks were protected from the elements, and you know they weren't exposed, like you know the wind and rain and any kind of erosion like that. Person coming up, who who uh, did the damage on those things, or was that his dad? No, it was my dad. So your dad saw someone, but didn't mm -hmm. know who it was. No, it wasn't. They didn't really was know. They didn't really know what they was doing at the time. Was it one guy or or two or what? <sighs> I can't really remember. See, Daddy seen this, seen this guy or or whatever, and it wasn't till later that they figured out what they was doing down there. I mean, you know, pe people walk down the river, and you know, you, you don't think a whole lot about it, but 
the next day or a day or two later or something, they figured out what was going on. That they'd been down there trying to destroy those tracks. And I mean, you you just got those type of people in the world, you know, they, that uh, they believe strong in something else and they believe you're wrong, they believe they're right. And, Anyway, it's, it's bad that they did on some of it. But they done that down there on what was called the Taylor Trail. And that's where they done that. Okay.